taking a break from GP coverage, watching a green-black delirium mirror between the amazing Seth Manfield and the also amazing, but not as notoriously winning, uh, GPs as Dave Shields. And we're going to instead do some old school, like here's my deck, then we're going to go see if we can get games with it, see how many we can get before st- before everything crashes. So um, we're going to try some energetic thopters, and uh, we kind of have to change some things to make it energy thopters, which is we have to slow it down a little, and we have to make sure that we have like pretty high toughness and that we can kind of kick back a bit and then use our energy tricks to just take over the game. So what do we got? We got Reckless Fire Weavers, because that can kind of deal incidental damage and gives all your Thopters like a pseudo haste where it just gets an extra damage when they come out. And Smuggler's Copter, of course. And Era of Innovation, this this is fun. Whenever an artifact or artificer, which is a creature type, come into play, you pay one for energy. Six energy lets you draw three cards, but often we can do way more crazy things than that. Either Meltdown gives you energy and turns uh, one of their creatures or vehicles, minus four, minus O, into a big ugly wall. Harness Lightning uses some energy to kill things. And then we get into our threes where we actually start playing creatures and putting threats on the board. So like PNLR. Right now I have Vile Aggregate because I think the five toughness will be important. Holding the opponent back will be important. This is the spot that might need to be Chief of the Foundry. I'm pretty torn on it. I feel like Chief of the Fon- Foundry is a big lightning rod that gets swept up along with everything else while Vile Aggregate might stay on the board and do work. Uh, I guess it depends on your meta. But then we have Thopter Engineer, Whirler Virtuoso, this guy, kind of the combo with the era of innovation in that we pay only one energy for thopters as long as we have mana available. D- uh, Dynavolt Tower, bolt something, uh, convert our energy to damage. This also maybe should be something else, but we'll see. Uh, three Whirler Rogues, two Piakirans, and two Thopter Spies. And then for the land, we, I run 26 because we absolutely want to curve out. We don't just want to get four lands either. We want to era to keep the party going. And so then over here we've got uh, 10 basic lands, 2 funerals, 2 Westvale abbeys because making Ormondal can be a really good way to stabilize or win. And uh, Sulfur Falls and Foundries, Aether Hubs and Highland Lakes. Aether Hub obviously is useful but it's amazing how often we run out of colored sources in this deck since we do need double red and double blue while running Westvale Abbey and Foundry. So I think I need all the lakes, but we're going to see how ugly this mana base is in practice and maybe tweak from there. So that's kind of my new energy thoptery thing. And let's see if it's actually good. I found it to be... What I found it to be is very unlike the thopter decks of the past, where it's just kind of slow and very plodding. You really do end up taking your time. Uh, this is A is at Thopters, and it's one that I'm going to try. Uh, I don't know that's better. Like, the Thopters from Battle for Zendikar, because it was up against ramp so often, had to be kind of this all-in aggro tempo type deck. This deck ends up being the control deck a lot more often than you'd expect, where it just kicks back, sits around, and... Uh, generates a bunch of thopters, a bunch of energy, and tells the opponent to figure out how to beat it. So, it's a very different vibe. And it's reflected in the playing the creatures with high toughness. Um, the 1-3 for 2, the 1-5 vile aggregate for 3. You kind of put some walls up, and you put some thopters in the air, and you try to go nuts. Let's see if we can go nuts. And, I mean, we have the innovation, we need to draw lands, and we need to draw red land, we can try better. Uh, yay. This is not really better. Um, the double blue is particularly bad. Okay, I guess we'll try this. So, 26 lands and two hands in a row where we couldn't get more than two lands and more than one of our colors. It's the it's duels. It's it's the way duels just wants to be. And then here we go. Now we got all the lands. We'll see if we just draw like infinity more. 
Our opponent is rocking a 70-ish card deck, a 4 rank, this Parasite 899. They've got some red-blue going on themselves. We'll see if they're like a spell Dinavolt Tower style thing. An or what they're going for. I mean, with 70 cards, you're probably just all your favorite blue-red cards is gotta be what I'm guessing. And two lands in a row off the top. We can stop drawing those now. Gonna need more spells. This'll be a very lonely vile aggregate. And, uh, alright. Great. <laughs> the absolute worst thing to run into when you're playing, uh, Aether Meltdown is Thopters. So do we want to shrink this? Nah. Let's uh, let's see what else happens. Well, there's a there's a spell we needed. So let's see what happens. Hello, Nighthawk. Yeah, I'm trying to add a little more spice to the deck selection. And we'll see how that goes. Gotta gotta get juiced up for the tournament. Not that I'll probably end up playing some kind of brew, but it's good to have them around. If I keep playing all the good decks, people might, you know, get ideas about what decks to run. And can't have that now, can we? All right, he's drawing cards. That's bad for us because we are not fast. But if we that what's good for us is he didn't have Whirler Rogue or Pia Kieran or Thopter Spy Network on turn four, which is probably the way this deck works. It does good work anyway when you have those things going on. So, in comes his Thopter token. We go down to 19 as soon as he finishes watching those damage effects. And he is taking his time. Alright, good, good, good. So, where do we start? I guess we'll start here. Because then next turn, perhaps the unblockability will be more relevant if he holds back to block the aggregate. Boom, boom, boom. Hello to some of the usuals in chat. Come to see the Thopter Annihilation. We kicked it off with a six card hand and it quickly went to a five land three spell ratio, but we've drawn out of it like an absolute champ by top decking Whirlerogue and Pia Kirin right at the time we'd want those. So our opponent thinks that it's a cathartic reunion deck with Thopters. So maybe I'm misreading what he's going for. Of course it's seventy cards, so there's only so there's only so much coherence you can fit into your theme for seventy cards. Yeah, I thought he might have a removal spell for Pia, which is unfortunate, but I still don't regret the play. Well, there, that's unfortunate. I mean, one of the great things about playing uh, blue and <laughs> red 70 cards is you just throw in all the goods. But that's fine. We're, we'll just stomp on over him again. Mm-hmm. Let's see... I could play this, and then all the artifacts would have haste, and it would be a 2-5, so it would go over Pia, so... I'm going to lead with this, and maybe we'll find something to melt down on end step. Right now, the energy theme of our deck is non-existent. Just haven't drawn it. That happens sometimes. It's kind of a split deck. Sometimes you play a straight Thopter game, and sometimes you play an energy weirdo combo game. Yeah, he's probably, uh, his deck might be Thopter Spells, Spell Thopters, or Pia plus Spells. I mean, he's running Geist Blast, he's running Epiphany, which makes me think you're just cramming it all together. Spells, Artifacts, Burn, Devour and Flames, sure, why not? <laughs> Don't expect to run into that particular answer to my Vile Aggregate often, but... 70 cards? Why cut anything? Hey, he's he's playing energy too. You know, just just get it all in there. He's like my deck, but so leveled up I can't even imagine how I would compete. Yep. <laughs> he's just so next level on me right now. Alright, so what do we want to melt down? I guess we'll melt down the 2-3. I mean, it can't attack me anyway. But, eh, it is his most useful body. I doubt we're going to get anything else worth uh, meltdowning, especially two something else worth worth meltdowning anytime soon. Melting down. Down melting. Whatever. 
Just don't listen to me. <laughs> Willbreaker getting meltdown. Yeah, I'm sure Willbreaker's in there too. Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> then he can go Willbreaker ba uh, Pia Nalar on me. Is that an artifact creature you control? Target artifact creature. Yeah, <laughs> just go off. <laughs> Steal all my artifact creatures with uh, Pia. Make me regret my Aether Meltdown choice to the max. <laughs> or, you know, there's there's always a play like that. That's that's great. <laughs> that's great. I can deal with that. A hello to Ben Somniac as well for jumping in uh, to chat. He's, he, he's going to try to race me from 11? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. Something's happening. Something's happening. Tick tock. So I'm thinking of trading my Whirler Rogue because it's actually not going to do much this game because I get, he has the O3 over there, so like it's not going to attack, and the unblockability probably isn't going to be how I pull this game off. Which means, let's see, who's the beat down? I guess I'm the control right now because I have three cards in hand. Still, when you're free to attack, you should attack, so we'll get a... We get a few more Thopters in there, but we're going to stop taking pokes in the air. We're going to at least leave a defender back. And then we'll get our creatures onto the board. We're the Rogue and uh, Pia and Kieran Nalar putting us a little bit ahead in this game as we're both down to one card, but obviously we have the bigger board thanks to those guys. The, the now deceased, by the way, now deceased. <laughs> All right, dear opponent, energy spells Thopter deck. They do have a Geist Blast, which in the yard we have to worry about. Uh, or they could, yeah. No, well, there's that. Let's try to finish the game out because I don't know if that's worth a concession just yet. You just never know these days. People do what they do. Another Geist Blast. Copying Geist Blast. And he conceded? And they're taking out the Thopters. Interesting. I guess that that shrinks the aggregate. That gives him a chance to peck at me if he wants to. But he has now decided he is no longer the beatdown, and the last card is a land. Oh, brutal. Just brutal. That's why you love Whirl of Rogues in these decks. Two from the Fireweaver. We could go unblockable with the aggregate instead of attacking in the air. Which, I guess that makes sense. It's a one-turn clock. And the, then we also have lethal in the air, especially if we draw another artifact. <laughs> Yonder showed up to ask me if Vile Aggregate in Thopters is still a thing and walked into this game and said, yes, why, apparently it is. Um, here's the thing with Aggregate. I said it at the top when I first launched this, and I'll say it again. Um, it's this or Chief of the Foundry right now. I'm actually not playing Chief of the Foundry because I find it to be a lightning rod that just gets swept up with all the other cards when you go for like a big board. It's nice to have a plus one plus one bump for some haste, but I, I've, I've put it aside. Uh, Foundry's on the bench for the aggregate because I think the aggregate's harder to kill and the big butt on the aggregate means it can do some blocking too while you set up your energy combos, which is what the deck really wants to do. We just didn't draw the, any energy cards this game other than the Aether Meltdowns. So, 
I think that for kind of a more defensive, controlly, combo-y Thopter vibe, which is what this version is, I think Aggregate's the better card. But I could be wrong. I'm I'm definitely willing to say that I could end up wrong at the end of the day. It's just there's so much red removal now in the format, and aside from Lightning Axe or a really pumped up Bombardment, like Aggregate does work. He he gets in there and takes care of the biznaz. Fire Weaver also fantastic for just sitting there and picking at opponents and picking at their planeswalkers until you're ready to swing over with the flying army. One game in the bag. Let's see if we can get a more uh, exciting Thoptery energy game this time, as that was a very traditional Thoptery game. Make some 1-1s, one do a lot of flying, good times. Flashback to uh, Origins and Zendikar season. Lots of thopping, thop thop thopping, thop thop thopperoo. Yeah, the loss of Perilous Mirror was pretty devastating, and Thopters didn't have a good two drop for last season, which kind of took it off the radar. And Fire Weaver is an understated two drop, but he is really good. He is legit. Let's see if we back out here, what happens? If it freezes up, it'll be the end of this particular video. And a big thank you to Stainless for making. Twitch and YouTube video production so easy and enjoyable. As usual, as always, a big thank you. Well, alright, um, so that's the end of this particular video. Catch the next one.